Hey guys, Eric and John back at you with Five Stone. Uh, another video in the series here with our field care, uh, range care. We've gone over what we carry in the previous videos on us. We've gone over basic range safety, our packs, our gear, different equipment. We've been diving into the bags. The next thing that we're going to uh, talk about and dress here is the Israeli bandage. Um, John's going to go over the application of why you would even use it and how you would use it. And they're really good in some really difficult situations that you can't use a regular golf for. Yep. Uh, first off, I'm going to show you how they get the package. Uh, they come in a vacuum seal pack like that. Okay. They've got uh, serrations on it where they're easy to open up. Again, this thing is not dependent on tape or anything like that. Um, so wet environments, lots of blood, dirt, stuff like that. You don't have to worry about tape sticking. Yeah. So these are very easy to open and they, they you can carry them anywhere. You can get them soaking wet. They're vacuum sealed. These are not going to get wet, okay? Uh, but when you get it open, they come kind of looking like this. This has been one of our trainers. Uh, they come with a with a heavy gauze padded uh, surface there for your wounds. Yeah, and they okay. got multiple sizes and all that, right? Yeah, they've got anywhere from like I think two inch up to like big abdominal yeah. uh, bandages. Uh, so like for today, for instance, a lot of people shoot steel. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can catch some splatter or, sh or shrapnel or ricochet, ricochet. even. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times people get hit up here in the neck. Uh, you know, somewhere difficult like this um, to bandage. These are perfect for. Um, so basically, they've got a, a big loop right here. You kind of want to grab that first. You want to grab it just like this to apply it. So if he's, if he's got a wound right here, first off, I'd, I'd probably put a bunch of that gauze that we talked about earlier. You know, uh, I had a guy get stabbed in the neck not too long ago. Get some. Yeah. This is a short section. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, can, you know. Yeah. So basically, if it's if it's heavy bleeding, immediately what I do is I put my fist in that neck and try to try to hold that pressure there until you get that gauze in there. Uh, your patient, if he's still alert and able to to help himself, he can help you. Okay. But uh, get this uh, gauze right there. Basically, I want to bring it behind his back here and try to get it with my other hand and then I've got it right here at this position okay I want to put this roll through that loop right there try to keep that bandage on his neck and basically you want to pull it pull it tight like a belt okay I can definitely feel the pressure yeah. on it yeah that's good so just keep wrapping it around his neck just like this right here and, and pull it through this little loop right there that's like a little alligator clip. And once you get it through that, that's gonna be your pressure point. You wanna pull it back again. You're gonna feel some more pressure. You feel that? Mm -hmm. So that, that buckle right there puts a lot of pressure on that wound. And then from this point, you just wrap it over and over. It's easy after this. And basically when you get to the end, it comes with alligator clips right here. And you want to take it and hook it in what you've got there. Okay? And it grabs into that pretty much like ace bandage there. That is definitely How's that feel? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. But you got to imagine, you get a, you get, you're bleeding out, and you can't put anything around your neck. Yep. Circumferential, you're going to kill the person or kill yourself. You can't do that. So this is your option. And you just had somebody, what, just a couple days ago? Yeah, it's not been long. Had a guy... Um, he was heavy drug use, stabbed himself in the neck multiple times with squirting blood, and immediately jumped off the roof of a house. Yeah. And he had this gaping wound on his neck, and I just immediately, as soon as I got to him, threw my fist in there and bandaged him just like this. Again, you can't take stuff all around her neck, okay? That's if you you want to kill your patient, that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do but, that. But yeah, we're trying. We're, we're in the business of saving <laughs> yeah, lives. That's here. right. Yeah. So you always want to go opposite armpit. So if he was wounded over here, take it on that left armpit. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of pressure there. Yeah. And that guy survived, right? I mean, he did survive. When I tell you guys that Five Stone has lived it and done it, we're not just out here watching a video, coming here trying to reenact something. This is legit. Yeah. Okay. The man in front of you just saved somebody's life doing this, doing the same thing. You know, and you need to reach out to your first responders, to your law enforcement, to your military. Thank those people. Appreciate those people for what they do. And that's why we're here, you know, is to try to share some knowledge so maybe it'll help you, yep. you know. And it's it's good, you know, in our shoes showing up and you've already got some bleeding control. You know, luckily, we were right there on scene. Like, we watched him 
do these, you know, cause these injuries to himself. So when he jumped off that roof, like he was at my feet pretty much. But we're not always immediately there. Like yeah. right here where we're at, would it take 20 minutes to get out here no, from yeah. Camelsville? Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. A, that's a long trip. So if he didn't have anybody to take care of this, if this is an arterial bleed in the neck, you can bleed out real quick. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's real close to the heart. Uh, your heart's feeding your brain real early in the process. Yeah. So you're gonna bleed out probably a couple minutes. Yeah. Um, so you gotta have that control. And you know, you can cut cut these arteries off on this side. You've got two more arteries on this side of the neck that's gonna feed that brain as well. Yeah. So you're not, you know, cutting the brain off completely. Anyway guys, that's it for the uh, Israeli bandage. Uh, very essential tool that you should pack. And uh, keep watching the next upcoming videos. We've got more gear to review that we feel is very important. Thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. We're out.